But that's not the God that I serve. That's not the God that we serve. He does not change, hallelujah. If he healed before, in the beginning, he heals today, and he will heal forever because Jesus never changes. I know that your pastor is in Cancun. I'm sure he's having a good time there. I have been there, and I can tell you it is nice there. And uh, I praise God for your pastor. I praise God for all of you. We're, we're only a few here. But I thank God that you came. Amen. Tonight, I would like to use three different characters in the Bible that I believe I can use as a type of Christ, as a type of the church, and as a type of the world. Now, I don't know. I probably have an argument with some theologian about this. But for the sake of my teaching, because I'm actually going to teach more than, than I'm going to preach. For the sake of my teaching, bear with me, and let's see what God has to say about this, okay? Would you please open your Bibles with me, please, to 1 Samuel chapter 25. First Samuel chapter 25. What happened to my living Bible? Doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Let us read. It says, we're going to read verse 23 to 30, okay? Verse 23 to 30. I know that probably the version up there is probably a little different than this one, but I'm sure you'll get it. Hallelujah. It says, and when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lightened from her ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and she fell at his feet and said upon me my lord upon me be the iniquity and let thy handmaid I pray thee speak to thy ears and hear thou do you have the, 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 the King James or the living translation do you have uh, Samuel 25, verse 23. If you have the living, just, just the, the King James, okay, that's fine. That's fine. No problem. No problem. And look what it says. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lightened off her ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground. Verse 24. Hallelujah. And fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me let this iniquity be. And let thy handmaid, I pray they speak thine audience. And hear the words of thine handmaid. Verse 25, please. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Bilial, She's talking about her husband. Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young man of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Verse 26. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord has withholden thee from coming to shed blood and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as my husband, Nabal. Curse it, foul, foolish man, wicked man. 
Verse 27, please. And now this blessing which thine handmaid has brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young man that follow my Lord. Verse 28. I pray thee, forgive thy trespassing of thine handmaid. Wait a minute. It was not her that sinned. It was her husband. But yet she took her husband's sin upon herself. I, I, that's a tremendous thing. That, that just blows me away. Blows me away. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord and evil has not been found in thee all thy days. Verse 29. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul but the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord, thy God. It seems like she knew that David was, was being searched for. She knew that someone wanted to destroy David. But yet she knew that God had protected David all this time. And thy soul of thy enemies then shall be sling out as out of the middle of a sling. Verse 30. And it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to the good that he had spoken concerning thee. She knew of the prophecy that David would one day be king of Israel. She knew that. She recognized it. And it shall have appointed the ruler over Israel. The word Abigail, or the name Abigail, the interpretation, what it really means, it means father of exaltation, father of happiness. This woman was a sensible woman. She was a clever woman. She was a humble woman. She was a peaceable woman. She was a woman of faith. And the Bible goes as far as to say that she was physically beautiful. I wish that we could find these characters in every woman in the church. Although this woman was sensible, although this woman was humble, although this woman was peaceable, although this woman was full of faith, she made a mistake. Like everyone else, we all make mistakes. You would think that a woman like this, with such a experience, such a character that she had, that she would never marry a man like Labo. You would think that she would not make that mistake, but like every one of us, we all make mistakes mistakes now the word Nabal which means foolish crude evil son of Bilial which means son of a devil look at that I mean here's a woman that had these wonderful traits of character you know what I'm saying I'm sure she had a discerning spirit but yet she marries a man like this a man that's evil a man that's foolish. A man that is a son of Bilial. He's a wicked man. He's an evil man. He's a son of a devil. I said to you that there were three people here that I wanted to type them as someone else. When I look at this woman, this woman is a type of the church. You'll probably say, well, you're going to have a problem with that, Pastor. But let's look at the events. Let's look at this situation here. When I look at David, it reminds me of Jesus. When I look at Bilial, when I look at Nabal, it reminds me of the world. The Bible says that David had an army, 600 men. 
And the Bible says that he was in the wilderness of Moab. He was there with his soldiers, with his army. And right beside him, next to Carmel, the man Nabal owned a lot of land. And he was grazing his flock there. He had 3,000 flocks of lambs. He had another thousand of goats. The guy was wealthy. He was rich. And the Bible says that David, who had an army that had to be fed, called some of his servants and said to them, go over to Nabal. He's grazing his sheep. We've been there many times. We've put protected him from the enemy we've protected him from being stolen we have been a wall of protection to this man and to his flocks and to his servants in other words david while he was there he didn't let nothing happen to these people that were taking care of the flocks of nabal but it came a time that the army needed food and david after doing all of this thought to himself surely a wealthy man like this will supply some food for my troops. And the Bible says that he grabbed 10 of his young men and he said, go to Nabal and ask them if he can provide some food for us. After all, we have done so much for him. We have protected him. When the enemy came to steal his flock, we stopped him. When robbers came to kill, we stopped him. I was a wall. We were a wall of protection for this man and for his flock and for his riches and everything that he had. Surely will recognize that I have been gracious to him. Do you understand what I'm saying? You get what I'm talking about? But the Bible says because of this man, his, his character, he was an evil man. He was a man bent on doing evil things to other people. Because he had so much riches, he thought he didn't need nobody. You see, that's the world that we live in. They don't recognize that everything that they have comes from the hand of God. The one that they claim has come to destroy them. But in reality, he has come to give them protection. He brings food upon their table. He brings rest to them. He gives them health. He gives them life. Oh, hallelujah. And I, this is what I'm talking about. David is a type of Jesus here who has supplied protection. You see, the reason we and I, we wake up in the morning it's because of God's grace. Hallelujah. Even the non-believer, the reason why he becomes rich, hallelujah, it's God's mercies and grace. But yet, like Nabal, they despise God. The Bible says that Nabal said, who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? I know many servants that have flee from their masters. They've rebelled against them. Maybe he's one of them. Who is David that I will slaughter my flocks and give my bread to him? I don't know who he is. He's a band of thieves. In other words, the world will never recognize Jesus by the flesh unless it is revealed by the spirit they will not be they will not be gratified them they will not be thankful for what he's done and when the Bible says that the servants of David returned to David to bring the news is this the water for me honey Think about it. Think about it. The Bible says every good gift comes from the Father of light. See, the food that you have on your table is God that gives it to you. The clothing you have on your back, you ought to be grateful. The world ought to be grateful that we live in a nation that you can worship freely. This world should be grateful, especially Americans. We have such abundance. I went to my mother-in-law's house the other day on Thanksgiving Day, 
I mean, there was so much food that I, it was 30 people in the house, and yet there was so much left, oh, left over. That is God's grace. That is God's goodness. Hallelujah. I look at that and say, oh, God, you are so good. You are so merciful. You have supplied beyond what we need. Are we not to be thankful? <laughs> but yet, how many people do the same thing that Nabal does? Who is he? I don't even know who he is. I could care less about him. The reason why I'm rich is because I'm intelligent. Because of the reason why I'm rich is because I'm tough. But the Bible says he was a foolish man. And foolish people, they never see Jesus as who he really is. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. See, you will never, you will never, never have a relationship with God. Through the flesh. See, but God reveals himself through the spirit. See, you cannot know the Lord. You cannot be thankful to God unless you are in the spirit of God. And the Bible says that those ten young men left the camp where the, the sheep were and the sheep, sheep uh, shears. Because it was a time of sheep shearing. You know very well that when it was, it was a time of sheep, it was a celebration. It was a time where they ate and drank and celebrated for the fact that another year they made a lot of money. I mean, furs, you know what I'm saying? They had plenty of food. And Nabal was one of those persons. But I believe that the reason Nabal was prosperous was because of Abigail. You see, the this world, the reason why this world still goes on, the reason why this world God permits to live on, it's because there's an Abigail interceding for this world. And the Bible says that the servants of David went back to David and said, David, this is what he said. He doesn't even recognize. He's not thankful for taking care of him. He doesn't care about you. He could care less what you did. In fact, you ca he called you a thief, a band of thieves. But within those people there that heard the message, one of the servants of Abigail, of Nabal, heard it. And he ran quickly to Abigail. And he said, Abigail, we've got some serious trouble. Now, of course, the man didn't know that David had put on his heart that he was going to kill all the family, all that had belonged to Nabal. The Bible says that when David received this news, he put on his heart, I will destroy Nabal and I will destroy this family. Not one person will live. The Bible says that he told his soldiers, prepare your swords. We're going to go after Nabal. We're going to go to his camp. We're going to kill all his servants. We're going to kill his wife. We're going to kill his daughters. We're going to call his children. Hey, guess what? God is God. And if he wants to destroy, he will do it. And no one can stop it. Especially when you don't recognize who he is. When you give thanks to the things of this world, to the gods of this world. When you give thanks to your, to your intelligence. When you think it is your arm that's doing this, God despises that. Because everything that we have, every good gift, the reason I wake up in the morning, the reason I have food upon my table, the reason I have a car to drive, it is the mercies of my God. He has supplied everything. Recognize who he is. Give him the praise that it deserves. Give him the thanks that he deserves because he's the only one that supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ. Not only our needs, but he also supplies our wants. No, pastor. Yes. My Bible says in John, hallelujah, it says that whatsoever you ask, believing, you will receive. If my word is in you, hallelujah, and if I am in you, whatever you ask, whatever you want, <laughs> it will be given to you. David said, I'm going to destroy these people. Now, David was not that type of person. David was not a type of a person that took vengeance on his own. And you know that very well. How many times he had a chance to kill Saul? But he said, no. 
I'm not going to do it. But it became to a point that David had had enough. He said, that's it. <laughs> I have done everything that I could for these people. I have protected them. I have been good to them. My soldiers never stole anything from them. I was a wall of protection for them. Enough! Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And please take this to heart. Hallelujah. The world is about to see judgments of God because they refuse to recognize that he is God and everything that America is is because of him. And it's not because of our politicians. It's not because of our schools. It's not because of my medicines. No! It's not because of our intelligence. No! It is the God of America. When I say the God of America, I know what I'm saying. Because this nation was founded in the word of God. Did you hear the news today? Some of you heard it? Trump declared that Israel is the capital. Uh, that Jerusalem is the capital. Not one president had the guts to proclaim something like that. And they promised when they were you know what I'm saying but they never did it but this man did I'm telling you this man was put there by God I know there's a lot of people against him but when, when hey, hey when you serve God and you love what is truth and you love what is right you will be attacked I, I thank God for Trump do you, you, you ever see his, his vice president? That man is totally converted. I mean, the dude is a Christian on the water. He claims, he tells everyone the reason why of what I am. It's because of the relationship that I have. I have videos with him here. Claiming that. See, it's because of Jesus. He changed my life. And you know what he was saying? He said, and Trump has been changed also. <laughs> Praise God. But unfortunately, how many Americans that come to this, and not only Americans, foreigners, that take advantage of America. They abuse America. They want to bring their idols inside of America. And they want you to accept it. No, you don't have to accept it. Keep your idols with you. You lived in misery because of them. Why bring them here? Why bring them? No, please understand. There are people that I hear that are honestly here because they've been. My wife, when she came here, she they lied to her. When she got here, it was something else. But because God saw her heart, hallelujah. Today, my wife is a woman, praise God, that serves God even when she was younger. But she was faithful to the Lord. He said, Lord, I came here thinking of one thing. Because they, they had promised her father a church. When he got here, there was no church. In fact, the pastor that was taking care of the church had committed adultery. So they were left alone. Nobody to help. That's when these people, these Portuguese people, which is my people, I thank God for them. Even though they don't know the Lord, most of them. Even though they're idolatrous. But they have a heart. And God will use even a demon if he wants to, to bless his people. Yeah. And the Bible says that David got so angry. The Bible says he got angry. He, got, he says, I will kill all of them. I'll kill this whole family. <laughs> when I look at David, I see a type of Christ. The Bible says he's the judge. Jesus is the judge. And one day he will bring judgment upon this world. Hallelujah. The reason why this world has not been judged yet. The reason why this world has not been destroyed yet. It's because of the Abigails that are interceding for this world. 
your son and your daughter. The reason why they haven't been killed yet, it's because you have been interceding for them. My son Moses, the other day, said to it to my my son Mark said to his mom, Mom, stop praying for me. Because when you pray, even when I'm drugged up, I can hear your voice in my ears praying for me. I said, We'll never stop. That's our duty. That's what God has called us for. You cannot stop me or my son, and I will pray for you. You're right, mom. Don't stop praying. <laughs> and the Bible says that David took 200 of his men. He said, you stay here in the camp. You protect everything. And he took 400 men. Now, you have to understand, these are experienced soldiers. Nabal didn't have an army. He had many servants which probably didn't even know how to fight. Why do I say that? Because the Bible says that David and his, and his men shielded them, protected them. You see? And one of the servants that was there that heard Nabal say what he said to David ran over to Abigail. And he said, Abigail, we're in big trouble. You've got to do something. There is a time that God demands of you and me to do something, especially at a crisis. God has to raise up women like Abigail, women that are humble, women that know how to pray, women that recognize that everything that they have comes from the hand of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says she didn't open her mouth to no one. Some things you don't have to tell anybody. You just have to do it on your own because if you tell somebody, they're not going to believe you. If you tell somebody, they'll discourage you. If they tell someone what you're going to do that God said for you to do because your faith demands it, don't tell anybody. Sometimes not even your husband needs to know it because he will not understand it. And the Bible says she didn't say nothing to nobody. She grabbed, and I like this. I, there's a reason for everything in the Bible. There's a reason for everything. The Bible says she grabbed 200 breads. So look at this. And she grabbed two bottles of wine. Why? Why bread and wine? Why bread and wine? Why not something else? Because bread and wine represents the body of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb. This may tell you something. You and I, we have a mark. The devil, whether he likes it or not, he can't move. He can't do nothing about it. Every time he sees the blood, every time he sees the... Oh, Horamanabasha, he knows that something is about to happen. He knows that his, his kingdom will be bombarded. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that she got onto her asses. She brought figs, cereal, 200 breads, two bottles or, or skins of, 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 of wine. Hallelujah. She mounted them. Not just one, mounted them. In other words, hey, the reason why your home prosperous. Let me tell you, you, you right there, you. The reason why your home prosperous, it's because of you. People think, oh, it's my husband, he's a hard worker. Let me tell you something. People can be hard workers and nothing goes for it, Father. It just, everything falls apart. But when there's an Abigail, when there's a woman of God behind a man, hallelujah. Actually, it's not behind a man. A woman of God is not behind a man. It's the side by side with a man. Every great man, there has to be a great woman next to him. Let me tell you something, the man that I am today, hallelujah. I go it a lot to my wife. The reason the enemy does not come and devour things, it's because Abigail is faithful. She dies. She's generous. She's humble. She recognizes that David, hallelujah, would one day be king, hallelujah, and everything would belong to him. Hallelujah. Abigail got in top of the those asses, mules, and she took off. She didn't tell no money. She didn't tell her husband nothing. Because a foolish man does not understand the things of God. Sometimes it's bad you just keep it to yourself. 
When God has made you a promise, sometimes it's better for you to keep it yourself to tell somebody because they're going to try to discourage you. It's not going to happen. God is not going to do that for you. You don't have the capability. It has nothing to do with us. Everything with him. All we have to do is recognize and humble ourselves. Hallelujah. The Bible says she went towards where David was coming from. And that's what we read. Because when she encountered David, and I like what the Bible says in the King and the Living Translation, she came out of her, ass, her, 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 her mules and she threw herself to his feet. Oh God, when I see this picture, I see the church, hallelujah. I see you and me in the presence of David. His name is Jesus, hallelujah. And saying, God, do not kill that foolish man. Let his sin be on me. <laughs> I love women and men of God that recognize, hallelujah, that sin can contaminate anybody, even them. We need to understand that it's by the grace of God. The reason why we are standing. The reason why we live a holy life. The reason why the enemy has not destroyed us. It's because David, his name is Jesus. He's been around us. He has his armies around us. He has angels around us to protect me. And I mind many times it's happened to me that I have felt them around me. In fact, I felt them around me today when we were worshiping the Lord. Oh, I can feel the power of God. The difference is not my intelligence. It's it's not my money. It's God. She threw herself. And she said, I know you, David. I know that you fight the battles of God. Do not murder. Do not commit this crime. Because he was going to do it. You know, David never imagined, never imagined that a woman would appease his anger. Do you know why God, as anger has been appeased? It's because of the woman called the church of Jesus Christ, who is pleading, who is interceding, oh, many times with travail and pain at night. The husband doesn't see it. The pastor doesn't see it. Nobody sees it, but God sees it. And he says, I will not destroy them. I will wait for them to repent. Hallelujah. I have a brother-in-law. He's got a brother, his brother, he, my brother-in-law has a brother-in-law. He's rich. He's a big lawyer in big companies, business, makes a lot of money, was brought up in a Christian home, brought up in a Christian home. But today, you know what he says, Louis? I don't believe there's a God. His money became his God. The other day he got home. He's got all the money in the world, everything to be happy. Got home. He found that his son had taken drugs and he killed himself. How old was he? 16 years old. Why? Why does this, why does this happen? Because no Abigail is interceding. You understand what I'm saying? Because they will not recognize who Jesus is. He's a prophet. He's a good man. That's all he is. He can't do nothing for me. And because they refuse to recognize who he is, but not Abigail. Abigail. Abigail knew, I know who you are, David. I know that you fight the battles of the Lord. And I know the prophecy that was put upon you, that one day you will rule. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. The day is coming. It's getting closer where our Lord Jesus is going to rule this world. And you know what else? We're going to rule with him. Why do I claim that she is a type of the church? I'll tell you why. The Bible says, she, after having an encounter with David, after giving everything that, that was acceptable, that was honorable, hallelujah, to David, she gave it all to him. She went home. When she got home, she heard celebration. 
they were having a great big party at home. You see? You see how the world is? It's totally oblivious to what's happening. Do you understand what I'm saying? The world is totally oblivious of what's happening in here. In fact, to them, we look like stupid people. To actually leave the house and come to a little church like this to hear somebody speak. Because they don't get it. They don't understand it. These are things eternal. They live for the flesh, for the things of now. The Bible says when she got to the house, he was having a celebration. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, this, this was a time where he made a lot of money. And the Bible says he got so drunk. Nabal got so drunk that when Abigail got home, if it was any other woman, would wake him up and say, you stupid, you dumb. Do you realize what you did? We could have all been killed. But she said, no, this is not the time. Raise up women, hallelujah, that have the intelligence and the wisdom, hallelujah, when to speak and when to be. The Bible says a time for everything, hallelujah. Abigail said, this is not the time right now. She kept her mouth shut. She went to sleep. The next morning when she woke up, he, the, the Bible says that the, that the alcohol had gone from him. He's all set. Okay. And you know what you said to him? Nabal, David was about to come here and destroy our whole family. You would have been in misery for the rest of your life. But because <laughs> I interceded for you and for me, hallelujah, we were spared. You know what the Bible says? In the Living Translation, it says she had a stroke. That moment when she said that, he had a stroke. And for 10 days, he was in bed like a rock. And the Bible says after the 10 days, God, God, hallelujah, not David, God, hallelujah, killed him, smited him, and he died, hallelujah. Not only that, it doesn't end there, <laughs> hallelujah. The Bible says that when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, God, Took the vengeance for me. <laughs> vengeance is of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to touch no one. You don't have to fight against anyone. Let God do the fighting. Hallelujah. But it doesn't stop there. David said, Abigail, would you come and be my wife? Wow. Right now, I'm just his girlfriend. But I'm going to be a bride one day. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why I say Abigail is a type of the church that one day will marry her Jesus. Please, let's stand. This whole day, I practically spend the whole day today in the presence of the Lord. This is a simple message. But if you really bring it to the spiritual realm, it is a profound message. Because the only way this world, our families, our friends, our neighbors will be spared is because of you. 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 Because of, you. Because of me. Interceding for them. I truly believe that the reason why this world hasn't gone to, the, to, the, to hell in the handbasket yet, it's because the church is holding back. Because the only way the enemy can take over this world is when the church is taken out of here. And let me just say this. Some people just don't believe that. I believe it. It's coming. Lewis, it's coming. My Jesus is coming back. And you know what? Maranat. Come, Lord Jesus. I'm tired of this world. Of the wickedness of this world. Of the hypocrisy of this world. The crimes of this world. The babies that are being aborted every day. People that are stepping on other people because they have money. They think they're better because they have money. 
Look at what's happening. These sexual abuses that are coming. This is God that's permitting that. Because he's cleaning house in America. He's cleaning up. And you know why? Because the church has risen up and began to intercede. Let me tell you something. I believe we are in the greatest time as a Christian. God has put a man in the presence of this, this nation because God wants to bring America back to him. And I thank God that God always raises a man or a woman to bring his people back to him. If a, if a man doesn't want it, he'll take a woman. It doesn't make a difference to him. As long as the person is in the right state and is willing to just surrender everything to him. But I'm hoping God use me. Please, use me. Let me make the difference. Let me show Jesus to the, to the neighbors of this world. Because all they think is about money. All they think is having fun. Hallelujah. Celebrations for the flesh. But I'd rather celebrate in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you. Forgiven us, David, who is Jesus. How can I forget the blind man when he said, Thou son of David? Help me. Let me see, please. <laughs> oh God, I'm asking you. I'm asking you in the authority of your son Jesus. Raise up women like Abigail. So that they, they can intercede for their families. Intercede for their neighbors. Intercede for this nation, oh God. Intercede for the church. Hallelujah. Raise them up, God. Hallelujah. Like you did, Abigail. What your name be, means, God be exalted. May God be exalted amongst his people. And in this church, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Oh, okay, say hello to him. Praise the Lord. Okay, Pastor Bob sends hello to everyone. I'm sure he's having a good time over there. God bless him and God bless us. May the Lord bless everyone.